Hi, John Hass from FilmmakerIQ.com. In this Just One Thing, I want to show you a technique that was shown to me when I was just starting out by an editor by the name of Rich Uber. Now, Rich had produced a lot of music videos in the 80s and actually worked with Madonna on the uh, Like a Virgin tour. So he knows a thing or two about cutting music videos and knows a thing about cutting. And this is a technique about trying to match a cut with a musical beat. So let's jump into Premiere. And I'm recording this on the hottest day of the year, so I figured I'd be digging around with uh, some snow footage that I shot in the early part of this year uh, in the mountains of Idlewild. Let's take a look. <laughs> Okay, so you can see it's a very hard rock track, very big bombastic bass drum hits for us to play with as far as cutting to the beat. So let's get into it. So how do we cut the beat? Well, first thing we do is we look at the audio waveform, and that's a pretty obvious thing. Most people that have edited before understand that how the audio waveform works. I'm going to pick this particular waveform right here. So we're looking for the beat, and we know that beat happens right here at uh, frame 12, 15. And this is, by the way, 24 frames per second. Now this technique is to find the frame where the beat happens and then step it back one frame. So as you can see here, the cut is actually made one frame before. So let's just watch this one cut a couple different times. Now to contrast, let's go ahead and show you what this cut looks like if it were made right on the beat. Now to me, the version with the cut that happens one frame before the beat feels like it, the audio and the visual are more married together. It's a, it's a neater, it's a cleaner cut. Whereas the version where the cut is happening right on the beat feels more delayed. It's like a ricochet, like a kakung, kakung. It's, I, my, my brain just reaches for an onomatopoeia, right? It, it, it feels like the audio drives the cut. So you hear the audio first and then the cut happens. So why is this happening in the first place? Well, the key to understanding is this, is knowing that our senses are not all created equal. Our sense of sound is much more primitive and much quicker to respond than our sense of sight. I mean, the sound is relatively simple speaking, uh, biologically speaking. The sound comes into our ears, it vibrates an eardrum, the, the sensation creates a little electric signal sense to our to our audio cortex in the side of our, our brain right here. And boom, our brain understands, mess, gets the message, hey, there's some sound. But our visual sense is a lot more complicated. Light comes in from the scene, it enters our eyeball, it hits the cones and rods in our retina, where it is processed there before it's sent down the optical nerve, where it actually switches, and then it goes to the back of our brains where the visual cortex is located, where it's processed even further. So all of that takes a little bit more time than it would for audio information to reach our brain. So by moving that cut one frame ahead, we give our viewer that one extra frame of time to register the visuals before you hear the audio hit. So that's why this concept works. So let's watch this one more time. I'm gonna show you the version now with it hap with all the cuts happening right on the beat. And now let's watch the version with the cuts happening one frame before the beat. Now 
Now, I realize this is very, very subtle, and some people may not even pick it up. This is something that you kind of pick up if you stare at moving pictures for a very, very long time. It's the very, very subtleness of one frame. And I'm going to go on it. This is this is why I bristle when people say that, that high frame rate is the future. The great thing about 24 frames and 25 and 30 is that we can do so much with a single frame. We can create so much emotional impact by just moving one single frame. Now, don't think this technique is relegated only to cutting on beats or cutting to music. You can use it when you're cutting on action or cutting to react shot, even cutting to B-roll. Sometimes if a cut doesn't feel right, it's because there's one or two many frames. You can play with the cut, add a few frames on either side and see what works. It's amazing how much you can change of the character of a cut by just adjusting like one or two frames. It's, it's really incredible. Well, that's all I got for this installment of Just One Thing. If you found it useful or insightful, click the like button, click subscribe, do all the stuff that YouTube wants you to do. Thanks to our patrons on Patreon. You guys are awesome, all of you, and you help make this channel possible. If you're looking for Filmmaker IQ merch, got you covered. Look down there below at the merch shelf. Now, the only way to really learn filmmaking is to actually get your hands dirty and make some films. So go out there and edit something great. I'm John Hess. I'll see you at filmmakeriq.com. Bye-bye.